His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Law 3 for this year, accrediting an agreement between the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the government of Tajikistan regarding avoiding double taxation, preventing fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income. His Majesty the King also issued Law 4, agreeing for Bahrain to join the 1979 International Convention on Maritime Search and Rescue. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a written letter from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, inviting him to attend the opening of the 30th Janadriya Heritage and Cultural Festival, which is organised annually by the National Guard. His Majesty the King received the invitation from the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Abdullah Al Sheikh, during a meeting in Safriya Palace today. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques for the kind invitation which reflects the historic, deep-rooted relations between the two kingdoms and their people, commending the development of bilateral ties and joint cooperation. He praised the role of Janadriya Festival since its launch in presenting authentic Arab-Saudi heritage and lauded its continuous success as it attracts intellectuals and those interested in culture and heritage, which turned the event into an international cultural phenomenon. His Majesty the King wished the event further success that confirms the urban role and the honourable status of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the prominent leader of the Eneza tribe, Sheikh Fawaz bin Sultan Al Hathal and his brothers. His Majesty the King noted the remarkable efforts of the late leader of the tribe, Sultan bin Zaban bin Mahrut Al Hathal, in serving the kingdom and asked Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace and paradise. Sheikh Fawaz bin Sultan Al Hathal and his brothers expressed their utmost thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings and asked Allah the Almighty to grant him abundant health. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace Day the editor-in-chief of El Afi newspaper, Othman Al Omer. His Majesty the King welcomed Al Omer and praised the cooperation between Bahrain and the Saudi Arabia in the fields of journalism, media and culture. His Majesty also lauded the contributions of Al Omer in developing both Saudi and GCC journalism, especially the E newspaper, which covers various Arab and international issues. He also lauded the Alaf E newspaper in providing the latest political developments and analysis on political, economic and cultural affairs, wishing him further success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The meeting reviewed several national and regional issues in addition to Bahrain's steps in dealing with essential development in various fields. The Royal Highness has said the challenges facing the region require building strong relations with the different countries based on a partnership and mutual respect. They pointed out that Bahrain reaches out to all GCC countries in the economic and political fields, in addition to its support of all international efforts that reinforce stability in the region and across the globe. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudibia Palace the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Salah, former Speaker of the Representatives Council, Khalifa Al Dahrani, representatives and Shura Council members and senior officials. His Royal Highness stressed the need for further cooperation between Arab countries and the strengthening of unity. He called Gulf and Arab media to write about recent developments, express their opinions and raise awareness of the risks and challenges facing the region.
He also said that Bahrain's continuous consultation and understanding leads to achieving further goals that benefit the kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness lauded the democratic development in Bahrain, which has paved the way to strengthening the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. He said that the loyalty of Bahrainis and their efforts in serving the country are capable of facing both security and economic challenges. His Royal Highness lauded the role of the government in supporting the private sector, regulating the commercial and investment movements and increasing job opportunities through providing facilities that help overcome obstacles in order to achieve further progress in various sectors. He also lauded the role of journalists, media and columnists in benefiting the interests of Bahrain and its people.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the Cabinet meeting at Gudibir Palace today. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Cabinet highlighted the recent visit by Tunisian President Bejir Qaid Essebsi to the Kingdom, which he met with His Majesty the King. The Cabinet affirmed the strength of ties between the two countries and emphasised that such visits contribute to further developing these ties to serve the best interests of both countries. The Cabinet strongly condemned the terrorist attack that targeted a mosque in al assa Saudi Arabia, which resulted in a number of deaths and injuries. It also condemned the recent exchange of fire in Katif, which led to the death of two police officers. The Cabinet expressed sincere condolences to the families of the victims and wished the injured a speedy recovery. The meeting emphasised the Kingdom's full support to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in any measures it takes to maintain security and stability and its continuing efforts to to resolve regional issues, particularly those related to terrorism. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the Minister of Health on the importance of further empowering medical cadres and continue efforts to train and develop medical professionals in line with international standards. The Cabinet also discussed memoranda submitted by ministries and ministerial committees which included approving a memorandum regarding the organisational restructuring of the National Oil and Gas Authority. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum related to ratifying the Treaty on the Transfer of Prisoners between Bahrain and Russia. They also took note of a number of draft proposals submitted by the Representatives' Council. Following the meeting, Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs Issa Al Hamadi held a press conference outlining the issues that were discussed during the Cabinet meeting. The Minister highlighted that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister confirmed the importance of developing national staff. He stressed the Council of Representatives is performing its role using constitutional tools, adding that coordination is continuous with the Council to focus on the legislative side in order to contribute in the development of the national economy. Minister Al Hamadi highlighted that the Information Affairs and Parliament Affairs Ministries are objectively enforcing measures on all newspapers, pointing out the government's support to use technical development in all fields, including the media sector. He said the measures that are being taken aim to ensure that all activities are in line with the law and the granted licence. He added that the ministry is working on finding temporary solutions before the issuance of the new media law. The Arab Regional Centre for World Heritage hosts an international meeting to set an urgent plan regarding securing the World Heritage Site in Socotra Archipelago in Yemen. The meeting is to discuss ways to assist the Yemeni government regarding the restoration and rehabilitation of the World Heritage Site of Socotra Archipelago, as it was affected by a number of tornadoes last November, in addition to the current political instability in Yemen since 2010.